Hey guys, welcome to uh, kind of an unusual video. I'm doing a tutorial video. It's been a while since I've done one of these. I got a request from a friend of mine a while back to make a video about streaming with a capture card and particularly the uh, the Dazzle capture card, which when I got mine, they were pretty popular. I know nowadays there's like capture cards that can do HD and stuff. If you just want to do simple game capturing, like you just want to capture a Wii or something like that, uh, and it's not in fancy HD, the Dazzle is a pretty good capture card. Now, they wanted me to explain how to stream using the Dazzle, but I'm actually going to extend that a little bit to also show you how to record with it uh, outside the normal software that comes with the Dazzle, which I think just doesn't really cut it. Uh, none of the programs that come with the Dazzle I particularly like, so I'm going to show you um, another solution to that. I know in a previous video, uh, I have used, uh, I believe I showed Virtual Dub, which is still an option, but I think there is a better solution nowadays, so I suppose this is also an update to uh, the previous video that I did on capture cards. Um, now to get started here, uh, all you need is your Dazzle, of course, I have mine connected right now, you can't really see that, but uh, it is connected. And then you want to download the uh, the drivers uh, from here, from this link, I'll put it in the uh, in the video description. And then you'll want to find your Dazzle model, in my case it's the DVC-101. Um, and you want to make sure you download the right version because there is a 32-bit a version and a 64-bit version and this is also relevant for when you start capturing from it. Now to figure out what kind of uh, what you need you'll want to hit your Windows key and then hit break. They'll bring up this, uh, this system screen or uh, if you're on Windows 8 like me it's also you right click your start button and there's a system option right here. I can't remember how it is for Windows 7. I don't think that's there, but I think Windows Break should always take you to the screen. And if you look right here, you'll see 64-bit operating system. And this will tell you uh, which one you need. Another way to find uh, to figure this out is if you go uh, into your computer and you go into the drive where your Windows is installed. Um, right here you will see a uh, you'll see two program files folders and one is labeled program files x86 and that's also an indication that you're running a 64-bit operating system and you'll see why this is relevant you want to download the relevant drivers for your system so for me it would be these uh, and the drivers would be listed right here this is the driver that I would uh, need to download I've already downloaded and installed it and this is really all you need to capture from your Dazzle now, in order to capture from the Dazzle, we are going to use a program called Open Broadcaster Software, or OBS for short, which is a free program. Um, when you actually, when you go to the main page here, you'll see uh, two versions. I'm going to show you both in this uh, in this video. Um, this is the one most people have. This is the old version uh, of OBS, and um, you download that and you. Uh, you get an installer. Now, what OBS will do, or at least this is what it did for me, is it'll install itself into the program files folder. This is where it will always install it. And if you're on a 64-bit operating system like me, it'll also install one uh, right in here, in your 32-bit or the uh, x86 program files. Now, this is important because you want to make sure that you uh, start up the OBS that uh, matches your um, the drivers that you installed for your capture card. If you install the 32-bit drive or if you install the 64-bit drivers and you try to access your capture card from the 32-bit OBS application, it's not going to work. So you want to make sure you start up the right one. And uh, this is what it looks like. Now, in order to actually uh, record here, well, I already have this added, so I guess I'll just remove this real quick. Uh, over here you have your sources, and what you do is you go to add. You add a, vid a video capture device, and to make this easy, we'll just call this Dazzle. And then right here, it's already selected it for me, the Dazzle DVC-100 video device. And, um, yeah, we can, we, there's one thing in here that we want to change. We want to change the audio input device. You'll want to find your Dazzle DVC-100 audio device in here. 
and usually you only really need this option output audio to stream only but just for uh, demonstration purposes and show so you can actually hear what I'm talking about I'm gonna output the audio to desktop usually you wouldn't do this but uh, we hit OK and now if we preview the stream uh, it'll show up as a black screen right now for me this is not something that you'll always have to do but this is what I have to do uh, and you might have to uh, mess around with this as well. Whenever I use mine, I have to go to custom resolution and change this one here to 640 by 480. Otherwise, it doesn't pick up for some reason. I don't know why that is, but that's just how it is. Now we hit preview stream here, and you'll see uh, my Wii screen right here. We can uh, fit this to the screen, and you'll see well, I can actually enlarge this even. You'll see here my uh, my Wii screen, but you'll notice there's no sound. Why is that? Well, um, I can explain this very technically, but to make a long story short, the Dazzle actually messes up uh, part of its driver. And in order to get sound, you have to fix that. Now, there's two ways to fix it. Um, the easy way, or this is the way, um, you go to properties again, or actually I have to stop previewing. And then you go to properties and you can open the crossbar here. This is the important part of the video, and this is the part that most people struggle with. So, you go and you change this output to the audio decoder out, and you'll see this isn't set to anything. Uh, the current input is mute in, and yeah, that basically means there's no sound. So you want to change this so that it is set, it, so that this output is linked to the audio pin on your capture card. Then you hit apply, and now you'll see uh, they are linked. And when we go out of this, and we preview the stream uh, oh, it'll re it, it reset itself over there that's that's fine I guess we'll just fit it again but you'll notice now that there there is sound you might not be able to hear it very well I don't know if I can turn it up or if that will affect uh, the video hang <clears throat> hang on I'll actually like uh, move my Wii mode a little bit which apparently turned itself off but yeah you can uh, you can hear we very clearly have sound so that is a good thing now um, next up we will record and in order to do that we can go into our settings and we, if we go to broadcast settings usually uh, it is set to live stream but if you just want to record with it you just change this to file output only uh, if you're streaming uh, the rest of this video doesn't really change this is just the part that's different you would have this on live stream and stream to whatever servers you like using um, but if you set this to file output, it'll uh, mine outputs it in, in here in uh, the OBS folder in my videos, and we can hit OK, and we can start recording. Now you'll notice as soon as I hit that button, uh, the sound disappears. Um, that is because the uh, this version of OBS actually, uh, yeah, you'll notice there's n there's no sound anymore now. This version of OBS actually reloads the device, uh, causing it to reload the uh, the settings, and it messes up the driver all over again. Now, if you go into your into your properties here, as you saw before, we can't um, we can't open the crossbar anymore to change that. So, in order to change this while OBS is running, or after you hit the record button or the stream button, whichever uh, whichever one you're doing. There is another program you may want to download, which is a crossbar thing. You can get it from over here. Uh, all this program does is it allows you to access your um, your crossbar, the crossbar of your capture card, while you're uh, while you're already while, while you already have OBS running. So uh, you just do you just download this thing, the crossbar thing. I've already gone ahead and installed it and uh, or uh, downloaded it and extracted it on my desktop here. There'll be two files in this folder. You just open this one, and it'll bring up this uh, this screen. And we can select our Dazzle crossbar. We can open the selected crossbar, and we have our familiar uh, crossbar screen again. And in here, we can set this right again. Hit apply, and you'll notice as soon as I did that, the sound came back on. So we now have sound again. And that is basically how you get sound. Uh, onto your into your recordings and onto your streams from your capture card. This is the way um, you. It's not the way I recommend, but uh, it depends on 
what you what kind of features you want out of your streaming program because this version of OBS has the most features they are actually working on a new version of OBS which simplifies this process a little bit and I'm gonna show you that right now so let's close out of this one let's close this because we don't need this anymore um, other than the old version of OBS we actually have this one right here OBS multi-platform the new version that they're working on which uh, is not only available for Windows, but if you're on a Mac or if you're on Linux, you can also download this. If you go to uh, the Windows version, it'll say here early test build available. You can click that and it'll take you to this screen right here. And you can, uh, it'll tell you there's no official stable release yet, but you can click this link here, which will take you to a forum post. Um, uh, they're talking about a dependency here that you'll have to install first, so uh, you might want to install it. I already have it installed. It's just like a Windows uh, a Windows update you need. And then right down here is the uh, the latest release. So you can click this and it'll take you to uh, download for it. And uh, I have already gone ahead and downloaded and extracted that as well. It's right here on my desktop. And just like, uh, well... We go into the bin folder here, and just like with the uh, the old OBS, you have a 32-bit and a 64-bit version. And the same thing applies here. If you're using the 64-bit drivers for your capture card, you want to start the 64-bit uh, version. So you just locate OBS 64 in the folder here. Otherwise, if you're using the 32-bit one, you locate OBS 32 in this folder. So let us start up the new OBS here. And it'll take a while to load, apparently. There it is. And, well, as you can see, it's already in here. So we're just going to delete this real quick. Yep, I want to remove these. And just like in the old OBS, we can go to uh, Sources right here. We can click the Add button, and we can add a video capture device. Now, it's a little bit different. Um, I'm going to call this one Dazzle Video. And just like before, we have the uh, the Dazzle uh, video device here. I don't know if there's a way to include the audio uh, for this, like, within this. I think you actually have to include the audio separately. Uh, so it's a little bit different, but I think it's actually better than it used to be. So just like before, you can configure the crossbar here, which uh, which I can do right now, but I'm not going to uh, because... We can just uh, click OK here. This one actually comes up just the way, the, just with the, how the default settings are. I don't have to change the resolution on this one. So just like before, we can, uh, let's see, where is it? We can fit this to screen. And now we can add our audio device, which uh, we can hit the Add button again. We can add a audio input capture. And we can call this one Dazzle Audio, just for demonstration purposes. And now in here, you want to locate your Dazzle Audio device again, just like before. We can hit OK, and just like before, um, there is no sound. However, we can actually go back into the video, uh, the video settings here. We can configure the crossbar, and just like we did before, we change this so that that is fixed. And there should be sound right now. I can't really hear it. Oh wait, I know, I know why that is. That's because I think that's because um, this version of OBS doesn't uh, output to the desktop. I don't know if that's a thing that's already in, and I just don't know how to find it on this version. Um, or if that is a thing that's not possible and they're still working on that. Like I said, uh, the other version of OBS has the most features but simply because they're not done rewriting everything yet. So this version is still a little bit limited. But if you just want to do basic streaming or recording, this version is actually very usable. And I, I can actually, I can highly recommend it because it, it has definitely worked out very well for me. Now the nice thing about this version, as opposed to old OBS, is we can start recording just like before. We could go into our settings and here in output under recording, or actually it'll be it would be on simple normally. I have it on advanced just because I like the advanced settings. But uh, if you just have this on simple, as it usually comes up, 
you can actually browse for a folder again, and just like before, it'll say uh, it'll save it in videos uh, slash OBS for me. And um, now that that's all set up, we can actually start recording again. The nice thing about uh, this new version of OBS is it doesn't reload the device as soon as you start recording, so you don't have to use crossbar thing anymore to uh, fix your um, your crossbar. And should the crossbar actually get messed up while you're streaming or recording, you can just go back into the properties and uh, fix this again if you need to. You don't need to use... Uh, it doesn't like lock you out of the crossbar like it used to do on, uh, or on the original OBS. Uh, and even though you can't really hear it, you can see the little, uh, the little bar right here. There is definitely sound, and I can actually show you if I just... Uh, if I just start a rec well, not not streaming. I was already recording something. So uh, so even though this version of OBS doesn't uh, let you like hear the stream while it's uh, while it's running, uh, you'll still see that in this uh, in this folder right here where I have my recordings, uh, I can actually hit this one, and you'll notice they're sounding here. So um, those are two ways that you can. Um, that you can stream and record uh, with a Dazzle capture card using OBS. Um, use whichever version you prefer. Uh, as I as I said, I prefer the the new version here because it doesn't reload the device, so you don't have to use crossbar thing to fix your crossbar every time. And you can just set it once and then start streaming or recording or whatever you're doing with it. So um, I hope this video was helpful to uh, to some people and. Um, if you have a Dazzle Capture card, I hope this video helps you out. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. I'll see you on whichever other video of mine you'll decide to watch. See you guys.